integration also takes place in other life domains, like at workplaces, at schools. My main field of research relates to migration, ethnic minorities and uh, social inequalities. We studied socio-economic segregation in European cities with many teams from all across Europe. And the main finding of the study was that socio-economic segregation has increased everywhere in Europe. Rich people are sorting more and more to certain neighborhoods of the city, and poor people tend to sort more and more into different uh, neighborhoods. And what we also see is that there is an increasing overlap between socio-economic segregation on the one hand and ethnic segregation on the other hand. The number of ethnic minorities is growing in European cities, so these two dimensions of segregation overlap more and more. One example where segregation has grown a lot was a bit surprising for us. It was Stockholm. We often think about Sweden as a social democratic welfare state with very low levels of segregation, but segregation levels have increased a lot. There are three different factors that uh, make it happen in Stockholm. First of all, how mixed or how homogeneous are the houses in different urban neighborhoods. And in Sweden there are some neighborhoods that have really big homogeneous housing. Second, what we see for the decades already, there has been a very clear marketization taking place in the housing sector. And thirdly, there has been a very big inflow of migrants to Sweden. When we put together these three pieces, uh, we can understand why this quick rise in segregation took place in Stockholm. We mainly focused on residential neighborhoods and that is usually the main focus of the segregation studies, but of course, segregation also takes place in other life domains like at workplaces, at schools, during the leisure time. This research that we are doing here together with Professor Martin Van Ham focuses on the transmissions of segregation between the different domains. The mechanisms uh, uh, start from the labor market, and if the incomes of people are very different, these income differences translate into the housing differences because money buys choice of the housing market. And that's how the rich people sort of the richer neighborhoods and the poor people to the poor neighborhoods. And if the housing sector is based on the market, and if people take loans to buy a house, then actually the initial income differences are actually amplified on the housing market. From housing market, the, the link goes to schools because the school districts are usually drawn around the homes of people. And so when rich and poor parents live in different neighborhoods, their children also attend different schools. So that's how the segregation tends to repeat in the schools. And of course from schools, segregation again feeds back to the labor market. I like to do my research, but I think it's extremely interesting to, to communicate and interact with students because many ideas that I have developed actually have come from the interaction with the students. And I like very much the way the studies are organized here in Delft, but it's very much like a studio-based, uh, problem-oriented research. Students are working on some kind of neighborhood problem, and I have some kind of uh, maybe theoretical uh, or empirical uh, background from other contexts. And when we put this together, it's always very inspiring for me as well.